Good morning. In my hands, I have a cup of coffee. And I have a ramp assembly out of a compensator. You're going to need this so we can talk about this. Stay tuned. So welcome back to another tech video. We're going to try to do these once a week. And uh, man, I tell you, my email has been absolutely beat up over the past few months. Uh, comments on the channel and everything else in regards to eliminating your compensator, hence the title of this video, Eliminate or Compensate. Uh, it's, uh, I want to say, a controversial topic. And so what I want to do is give you guys some facts, let you make your own decision as to whether or not eliminating a compensator is the right thing for you. Now, I want to start with this ramp assembly right here. Uh, this came out of Harry's bike, and we're doing a full 117 for Harry and such. He's got about 50,000 miles on this thing. And uh, at some point, he had a build done by others and put, uh, I think, 15,000, 20,000 miles on it and all that. But I, I believe this to be the stock compensator part of it anyway. And there's one thing I want you to take a look at. Look at the amount of wear on these ramps. You can see that it's traveling quite a bit, beating it up pretty good. Now, 50,000 miles, should it be beat up this much and should this ramp assembly uh, be worn this much and should it have had its mating piece seen this much travel this high up? Should it be this way? No, it shouldn't. So the big question now is uh, people having compensator issues over and over and over again. The big thing is eliminating the compensator. So let's start with what the purpose of a compensator is. It does exactly what it says, exactly what it's called. It compensates. So what is it compensating for? Engine pulses. That's what it comes down to. So the spring pack assembly and all that type of stuff, the purpose of that is to absor absorb the pulses of the engine and reduce the shock load from the engine to the drive line. Okay, so think of everything from that crankshaft back, it's absorbing the shock load on that. Your transmission, the main shaft, the bearings, the primary chain, the clutch basket, the clutch, even the starter when you're cranking the bike. So we've got to think about all those things. And what it's doing is it is absorbing or helping to compensate for those engine pulses. Now, some would argue that, uh, well, you can put a solid front a solid front pulley on a belt drive. Well, the belt absorbs the pulses, so it doesn't transfer as much energy to the rest of the drive line. So, you know, that can be done rather successfully. And uh, the belt takes up the shock load. So, should you eliminate the compensator? Ultimately, it's a decision that you have to make, but I want you to think about something. The reason that I showed you this, imagine if we eliminated this and we put that solid front sprocket on there. All of this would then be transferred to the rest of the drive components if this is eliminated. So this was a eliminating shock load for some reason. And actually what we found when we tore his engine down is uh, he did have a good bit of run out on the sprocket shaft side. Now, one argument is that you know, if someone's replacing compensators, you're replacing them two or three times and you're fed up with it, let's just do away with it. Well, there's a reason that it's failing that many times. It's no longer a defective part if you're replacing them every 10,000 miles. There must be some other cause. And most of the time, what I find is that we have a runout issue on the crank. That seems to be the common problem. Now, on bikes over the years that I have seen that were running solid front sprockets, I would see common issues in all of those bikes. Transmission problems. I would see, you know, when you go to tear the bike down, trying to get the clutch basket off of the main shaft in the transmission, you would almost, you would have to virtually pry it off, have some sort of big puller because the splines between the hub and the main shaft of the transmission are just chewed into each other and eaten each other up. And again, that's transfer of a harmonic vibration in shock load, all right? Uh, the other things that I see is uh, a premature wear on clutch hub bearings. 
main drive gear bearings and transmissions. And I've even seen broken crankshafts. I actually made a phone call to my, my friend Mike Beland at A1 Cycle and asked him, you know, if he's seen that as well. And of course, he said yes. And his opinion on this topic is the same of mine. Um, in that, you know, eliminating the compensator, if you're drag racing, a little better throttle response uh, and, uh, you know, tighter feel to the drive line, yes, it does do that. But at the same time, I've seen it snap crankshafts, the sprocket shaft, snap them right off because there's nothing there to absorb that shock load. So in essence, this isn't really too different than the cylinder stud topic that I covered last week in that you make the stud stronger, you expose a weakness in another area. The same thing is happening here. If we eliminate this part's ability to compensate for that shock load, we're going to transfer it somewhere and expose a weakness somewhere else. Now, all you guys know that I, that, that I am a fan, and this isn't a product plug per se, uh, there's companies that have solutions to these. You know, Star Racing does make a billet version of this ramp assembly that's much better and you can still keep your compensator in there uh but and i as you guys know i'm a fan of the dark horse unit because it's somewhat of a blend between and this isn't a product plug just being straight it's kind of a blend between a solid and a standard compensator it still has the ability to absorb that shock load uh one common thing i have heard on uh, when when people have installed those, I don't want to say common. I don't know one out of I don't know one out of twenty maybe. Uh, I've talked about it's really noisy in the primary. Well, a lot of that it's only in neutral really is what they would term as a neutral rattle. And to give you a little bit of history, even going back to 2011, if you were to Google it, I'm sure you could find it. Uh, the motor company issued a tech service bulletin in 2011 for stock motorcycles where they had customer complaints on neutral rattle. And of course, they mentioned it's normal, it's not a mechanical issue, all these other types of things. Uh, that being said, <laughs> often what can happen is when you install that unit, or even if you installed a solid one, you can be exposing a weakness in another area. Perhaps the fingers in your clutch basket are worn and it's the clutch plates are able to rattle inside there. It can also be noise actually coming from the transmission. You're now exposing maybe the dog collars inside your transmission are worn and loose. And what you're hearing is that rattle when you're in neutral, when the transmission isn't fully engaged. So it is possible that it can transfer, you know, transfer that noise to the back. But that's just exposing another issue. It still has the ability to absorb some of the shock load. The other question I get is how long do the cushions last? Well, I don't have an answer for that. I haven't had to replace any yet, and we've seen some bikes with some very high mileage. And with Dark Horse testing it, of course, they uh, had bikes on the road for quite a long time with a lot of miles and found, you know, that they really didn't have an answer to that question because they the cushions weren't failing on a regular basis. So anyway, it wasn't a product plug, I didn't mean to digress that far into it, but that's the reason why I use that particular product, is I feel like it's a nice blend between using a solid and a standard compensator. Now there's other issues. Can a compensator actually go bad? Yes, the springs can get weak, they can wear, but sometimes again that accelerated wear it can be caused by other components, maybe an aggressive riding style, that sort of thing. Now, another common question I've had on compensators, everyone's looking for an upgraded version of a stock one for the 2006 and older models. Well, nobody really makes one. The reason they don't is because the stock ones in their stock format and design worked really, really well. Compensator issues largely, you know, with the masses, didn't really come around until 2007 when the design was changed with the integrated spring pack and stuff. You know, there were several issues with that. I think the springs just weren't strong enough, you know, to, to be able to handle that. So that's why you typically don't see upgraded ones. Now, the other thing we have to remember is from 2006 and back, people weren't building largely the masses, this displacement of engines that we're building now and they also were not making the kind of power. Oh, fly. 
wants to get in on the show, making the power that engines are now. You know, 2004, 2005, the goals for the masses were 100 horse and torque, right? You'd have a nice, healthy 95, 98, 103, something like that. So we're talking 100 horse and torque, 110, 120 horse and torque. Well, we're building engines now that, especially since the introduction of the M8, you're capable of bolting on 120, 130 plus horse and torque as much as 150, 160, 170 uh, on a normally aspirated engine. But we're still dealing with components that are designed to handle much lower power output than that, okay? As the engine gets bigger, the pulses also can get bigger. Uh, the, it's, just keep in mind, we're talking transfer of shock load and vibration. If you make that spr sprocket solid, that transfer, it, it's going somewhere. It has to go somewhere. You're eliminating the compensator, but you're not eliminating those pulses. They have to be transferred somewhere. So, with all this information, now that you know what a compensator really does, what it's there for, you get to decide how important that is to you. There's a trade-off with everything sometimes. So, my, my opinion, everyone is asking me for my opinion, despite I may have, again, friends in the industry that make eliminators, solid sprockets, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I might get a tongue lashing for this. But in my opinion, uh, I would, especially for long distance touring, you know, the average rider, eliminating that compensator, putting a solid sprocket on the front, there's no question that transfer, that vibration has to transfer somewhere. In my opinion, going solid is not right for you. Very much like not removing balancers from a soft tail engine. That's the same sort of thing. So we have to think a soft tail engine is rigidly mounted to the frame. The engine has nowhere to absorb that pulses, so those pulses are transferred inside the engine and also externally to other components. So the possibility of accelerated wear of bearings and piston rings, pistons beating the cylinders up, all that type of stuff, that vibration has to go somewhere. In a rubber-mounted engine, touring models, dynas, uh, that is transferred through and absorbed by the engine mounts. So I would never eliminate the balancer from a soft tail engine for those reasons unless it was being raced and unless the owner of that understood that it would reduce the life of some of those internal components, potentially leading to a premature failure. So there you have it. That's my opinion on eliminating compensators and also gives you some options on what you could do. Uh, remember, you might be eliminating the compensator, but that doesn't mean that you're eliminating the pulses from the engine. It has to go somewhere. So think about that. I appreciate you tuning in. I'm glad my fly buddy here who's on top of my phone still hanging out with us. I uh, appreciate you joining us. Uh, we're going to be back again next week, and maybe in the next couple of weeks we can do another live video. Guys, take care of yourselves and each other. Have a good one.